I have your brain scanned and permanently backed up in case something terrible happens to you, which it's just about to. But uh, now that you can see we've got this pin in there. Focus. You can see the little cross pin here. We're going to align the little cross pattern on the slipper plate and slide that over until it pushes on. Just like so. Okay, so now we are going to take our spur gear with the slipper on there. We're going to go ahead and slide that over the shaft just like so. And now that slips pretty nice. Now we are going to build the little assembly here. We have a large washer, which is going to slip on first. Put that over the shaft. Then we're going to slip our spring. Put that over the shaft. Then we're going to take our smaller washer. Put that over the shaft. And then our flanged nylock nut and put that on just like so. I'm going to tighten that down a few turns. Um, I think probably somewhere down the line here it's going to tell us how tight that should actually be but I'm just going to put it on right now until the nylock nut is fully on and the nut uh, come on there we go. There we go. Just going to put that on tight enough so the nuts doesn't fall off any time during the installation. And there we go. We now have our transmission belt. And we used up all of our parts. We still have a few more left over there, which I think we're going to use in the next step. So, okay, here we go. To set the slipper clutch, tighten the nut clockwise until it stops. And then loosen it two turns counterclockwise. Okay, so that's how you do it. All right, we're going to go ahead and find our part for step number 24. And we'll be right back. This next step is pretty easy here on part step number 24. We're going to go ahead and grab our bottom skid plate here you'll notice that there's four holes in the bottom and that lines up with the four holes on the transmission. I'm going to go ahead and you'll notice that there are two different size screws, parts number 65 and 66, and the shorter ones are going to go towards the back here. So we're going to go ahead and drop the smaller one in. Get that going. You hear that noise in the background? You know what? Let me go uh, shut this off. I'm going to go take a picture of that. It's always fun when these guys have noise out in front of my shop. So here I am nerding out on one of these in here, and that's what they do next door to me. I uh, spend more time over there than I do in here. They get some uh, pretty cool toys over there. 
we're located very close to Infineon Raceway, Sears Point, and they do a lot of race car prep work over there. So it's always fun. One of these days I'll tell you my story about going 200 miles an hour in one of their uh, cars over there down the road. <laughs> I didn't say that. That never happened, did it? Okay, so now we're done with part number 24. Um, you don't want to screw these in too tight. I, I kind of feel them uh, slipping a little bit there, and I don't want to uh, strip out the plastic case. So it looks like uh, we've got the transmission all mounted to the bottom skid plate now. Time to move on to step number 25, which looks like we're going to install our motor. So let me uh, go see what kind of motors I got hanging around in here. Whether it's the right one or not, I don't know. I'm just going to use whatever I have available. So, be right back. Okay, I went and found a can laying around the shop here. This one, not really sure what model the this honcho calls for, but this is a 55 turn uh, Tekken competition. Just so happened to have it laying around, so that's what we're going to use just using shop stuff here. Let's go ahead and put the pinion on and there's a teeny tiny little set screw. We're going to use some blue Loctite on there. Work in porn position for the camera here. Go ahead and put the pinion bolt in, we're going to go ahead and slide that over the input shaft making sure that the set screw goes over the flat portion of the shaft that way it holds it still and we're just going to somewhat tighten it down, we're going to revisit that when we check our mesh and whatnot. So now we're going to take the little 3 by 6 millimeter bolts and put the washer over them that are included focus, there you go, put the washer over those and again they're metal to metal so we're just going to put a little bit of Loctite on there and let's go ahead and mount up the motor here we may have to, I'm not quite sure with all the electronics here how what position this is actually going to mount in so we're just going to go ahead and line up the holes and get them mounted in. Here, I guess we'll show you here. When you mount them up there's generally two positions that you can mount them in where holes line up and we have uh, one position and two positions so we're just going to choose one for now and depending on uh, how our mesh is and where our wires want to line up and, and whatnot, we may change to a different mounting position later. But we're going to go ahead and put these two screws in. Come on. Doesn't want to find the hole. Story of my life. Okay. Enough working in porn position here. We're going to have to actually look at what we're doing. Come on. Ah! Okay. Time to get serious here. You guys get to look at the back of my head for a second. There we go. Now for some people that have never done this before, that will allow it to slide back and forth. And you can see the mesh right in here. And what we're also going to want to do, ooh, I got that one just right. You're also going to want to set your pinion so that it is exact height here as your 
spur gear or just a little bit over and then check the bottom because you want to make sure that as much of that meat on there grabs as possible. So we're just going to leave this a, a little bit loose in here for now because we're going to come revisit and set our mesh later. Um, actually I'm going to tighten that up just a tad bit so it's not flopping around. Okay, so now we have our motor installed onto the transmission. Time to move on. We have used up all of our parts out of bag D. So, yes, we are going to have to open our bag E now. See? E. So I'm going to go ahead and shut the camera off, open up bag E, and we will be right back. Moving forward to step number 26, we're going to mount the servo brackets to the servo plate. What we're going to do is take a look at the servo plate. Well, we're going to bump the camera first. We're going to take a look at the servo plate here and see that there are beveled portions in one side and not beveled in the other. And we are going to note the directions according to the direction here. So we're going to hold the plate like this and we are also going to hold it with the beveled screw sections facing up. We're going to take our servo holders which are part number 28-5 are the proper ones for the servos that we're using and optionally if you're using a different setup you can use the, the part number 6 instead of part number 5 but these are going to work for our servo. So we're going to mount these the first one goes into this little slotted hole here and we're going to use two of the the uh, three by eight millimeter self-tapping button heads. However, I don't have any. <laughs> For some reason, uh, this is the first mistake in the kit, which is okay. Um, with this many pieces, there's bound to be a few. But um, I actually have some that I stole out of my spare parts box that we're going to use. So we're going to go ahead and. screw on the servo mounts and poke myself in the hand. What's up? Ah, you gotta love when the neighbors stop by. There we go. Guy can't get a decent day's worth of work in here without somebody bothering him. <laughs> yeah. I like my neighbors. We're going to put this one in and just snug it down a little bit. Again, this one's on the slider, and uh, depending on your servo, you can slide that back and forth a, a little bit. We're going to go ahead and put the second one in. And those go in the two outside screws holes. And now, it looks like we are going to mount this to the front wheel assembly. I'm going to go ahead and snug that one down pretty good. I'm going to straighten those out so that they're on there just like so. Do not touch the operational end of the device. Do not look directly at the operational end of the device. Do not submerge the device in liquid, even partially.